Stick a fork in me! That won't be the last you hear of me! You brats didn't beat me! I'm just gonna take a little nap. The Loving Lumberjack by Al Funkoot. Do not weep for me, my sweet buttercup. For though I lay here dying on the frosty tundra, I know that your love for me shall never dwindle. Those wolverines were only doing what came naturally. Now go on and seek the warm shelter of our cozy cabin hideaway. Leave me here to face the elements. Wanda, I want you to know that in our short time together, you have made me one happy monkey.
the woeful whaler. There she blows! Steal yourself, oh slippery leviathan! I have but one harpoon to throw while there is. For you, an entire ocean to splash around in. How can I pierce your blubbery hide if you refuse to cooperate? I cannot work with this stubborn creature! I said I'd never love again. I stood there, strong like a tree, like an oak tree, in the forest, saying I would never love again. But when I saw your face, Wanda, I yelled, Chamber! That's the last of them. Now we can do something about Count Olaf. You mean Stefano? Uncle Monty is a scientist. If we're gonna convince him of Stefano's true identity, we need to show him cold, hard proof. Well, what about his luggage? Surely there's some evidence among his personal belongings. It's worth a try. Let's find his guest bedroom. Brats. No respect for privacy whatsoever. We'll need something to get this open. Hmm. I've got an idea for an invention that will pick that lock. I'll need a paintbrush, a spool, and that pair of tweezers. Powder puff, hand mirror, extra wigs, fake mustaches. This is more than enough evidence. Let's find Uncle Monty and show him right away. He's sure to realize how much danger we're in. It is absolutely true that had you acted differently in life, there are mistakes that could have been avoided, opportunities that wouldn't have been missed, and yes, even lives that could have been saved. We try not to think about these things, but when tragedy strikes, we can often do nothing else. 
I feel I am somewhat responsible for this tragedy. I uh, should have taken it upon myself to warn him that the incredibly deadly viper is one of the most deadly snakes in the world. I should know. I discovered it myself. You what? Don't be so hard on yourself. Dr. Montgomery was clearly a very reckless and strange man. It was a snake bite that did the job. There's no question about it. No, that's not true. The incredibly deadly viper couldn't have killed him. It's one of the least deadly and most friendly creatures in the animal kingdom. <clears throat> well, I don't know what you consider friendly, but in my opinion, poisoning someone is a terribly inconsiderate gesture. Ha! Huh. If there is a truer thing that could be said, I, I cannot think of it right now. It is often that I, I must question why I have devoted my vast uh, intellect uh, to the study of these ill-mannered reptiles. Uh, they, are, they are a thankless bunch and uh, very slimy. Uh, in all my years of service, I've, I've never received a single birthday present or a greeting card. Gee, I, I sure wouldn't want to overstep my bounds here, but uh, I have some free time now, and the tickets to Peru are non-refundable. Oh, no, no, Mr. Stefano. I couldn't impose. Imposition? Uh, no, I, I can't say it's, a, it's an imposition at all, though your thoughtfulness and consideration is appreciated. It would be an honor for me to carry out the last wishes of Dr. Montgomery. He is a very brilliant dead guy. Well then, it's decided. I'll just be dragging these children to the car now. Unbelievable! What you said about the snake is true! That means Mr. Stefano must be... <gasps> Ready, go! The children next went to live with their Aunt Josephine, who lived in a very old and creaky house, perilously perched on the edge of a cliff that looked out over Lake Lacrimose. One might think that she was very brave to live in a house like hers, but this is not true. Aunt Josephine was terrified of just about everything you can think to be afraid of, and quite a few things you would never think to be afraid of. Aunt Josephine? Baudelaire's? Is that you? Yes. Oh, good. I was worried you might be realtors. Realtors? Well, you can never be too careful about realtors. Who knows what they're capable of? Put your bags inside, we must go to town and buy supplies. I wouldn't normally leave the safety of my house, but Hurricane Herman is supposed to arrive any time now. Here's a list of everything we'll need. Grammar books? Yes! Grammar is my greatest joy in life. You can never have too many books about grammar. Oh. That there was all my fault, Ewa. I can't tell you how sorry I is for running you down there like that. Count Olaf. Olaf! What? That horrible man you warned me about? Where? Standing right in front of you. Behind this fine gentleman? Captain Shams, the name? Is not. Klaus, what atrocious grammar. What you should have said was, no it isn't, or no it is not. Either way would have been correct. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? Are you jigging me, girl? Perhaps it's just the ramblings of an expert fisherman, but grammar is the number one most important thing in this here world to me. He's wearing a disguise. That wooden leg is fake. Klaus, what a horrible thing to say. Oh, I don't pay that. No, never mind. I've had to live with this sort of thing ever since me leg was chewed away by the lacrimose leeches. Why didn't I wait an hour after eating? Why? 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 Wait, I've got one more. Why? The leeches got my husband, too. <gasps> Get out of town! Them dare blasted leeches. Doomed me to a life of happen. Captain Sham. Call me Julio. Julio, please say you'll come to my house this evening for dinner. It'd be an unfathomable pleasure, me dear. Children, gather the supplies for the hurricane, would you? Here's a list of everything we'll need. Aye, tis a fine little hamlet. The townsfolk will be happy to take care. Now have some peppermints and run along. We're allergic to peppermints. Pity that. Bread, cucumbers, limes, grammar books, wind chimes? What kind of hurricane supplies are these? We'd better get started. <laughs> Stores closed for the hurricane. Oh, you! Oh, well. 
I suppose I can make time for some very special customers. Looking for these? Try hitting that target. It should spin the crane and bring those books closer. This doesn't have enough force to move the crane. Hmm. We'll need a fishing reel, an egg beater, and a ladle. Those peppermints Count Olaf gave us will come in handy. us a note. As was always the case in the lives of the Baudelaire orphans, the note said nothing good. Aunt Josephine had given up on life and willed away the children to the newly met Captain Sham. That was his plan. He made her write this note and then pushed her out the window. Poor Aunt Josephine. Violet, this note is filled with grammatical errors. Aunt Josephine would never write like this. Wait a minute. I think I found something. If you take only the misspelled letters and eliminate everything else, you end up with... Yes, it's a secret message. What? The letters combine to spell... Curdled Cave. She's not dead. That's where she's hiding. Ah. Klaus! Violet! shut down for the storm. Ever read any books about sailing? Klaus had read many, many books on sailing, but it is one thing to read about something, and another entirely to do it. Had the Baudelaire children been given a choice, they certainly would have opted to read about sailing a boat to Curdled Cave. But very little in their unfortunate lives occurred by their choice. Aunt Josephine, you're alive! Children, you did it! You deciphered the clues in my note. Count Olaf forced me to write the will. Oh, it was horrible. It nearly killed me to add in those grammatical errors. I knew after I'd written it that he would do me in, so I threw a chair through the window and escaped while he wasn't looking. Thank goodness. Are you ready to go back? Go back? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going back. What? Well, it's not safe without Count Olaf lurking about. Josephine, you have to come back with us. You will to see Captain Sham, you're the only proof we have. I'm sorry, children, it's just too dangerous. I'm not going to discuss it any further. You know, Aunt Josephine, the Turtle Cave is for sale. So? That means that before too long, people will come to look at it, and some of those people will be realtors. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. All right, I'll leave. But I'm not going anywhere without my grammar books. They're at the base of the caves. You could take the elevator down, if it wasn't stuck at the bottom. Sonny, we're gonna need your help with this. Ah! Klaus? Was that your stomach? I don't think so. It's the leeches! Uh, it's a good thing none of us have eaten in a while. Right? I had one banana left! I was so hungry. Ahoy! 
We've got to hold the leeches back until it can rescue us. As so often happens, the Baudelaire children's relief turned to despair when their rescuer turned out to be none other than Count Olaf. And as so very often happens, Count Olaf did something of such unspeakable cruelty that I must refuse to even speak about it. Suffice it to say, Aunt Josephine was no longer a part of the children's lives. Aunt Josephine! Children! Is that you? <coughs> yes, it's me, Violet! Mm, our dear Count Olaf has just saved us from the lacrimose leeches. Back! Back to the depths, you blood-sucking Helliums! You'll not devour these innocent children's heads today. Not on my watch. Not on my watch? No, I like the first one. <clears throat> it appears I was wrong about you. You've proven yourself to be an exceptionally capable guardian, and I would be remiss in my duties if I did not put them back in your care. <clears throat> oh, I'm dancing on air. My heart is swelling like a blood tick. Why, if it weren't for you? Don't say it. I can't bear the thought of losing my little treasures. Even the massive inheritance would be a constant reminder of my heartache. Really? Oh, well, no need to fret about that. The law clearly states that you would not inherit the Baudelaire fortune if anything happened to the children. That only applies to close relatives and married couples. Married? My good man, you've given me an idea. I shall celebrate the children's safe return with the debut performance of my new play. It's called The Mar. <laughs> the children soon discovered that Count Olaf planned to gain control of their fortune by marrying Violet. To ensure that they would cooperate, Count Olaf caged their sister Sunny and suspended her from the top of his tower. While Violet felt she had no choice but to go through with the wedding, Klaus set off on his own to rescue Sunny before it was too late. Genius! I'll need that bicycle pump, that coil, and that gardening tool. Hey! You just don't give up, do ya? My hero! Hold on, Sonny. I'll get you out of there. Tisa? Marrying Count Olaf. Unless we get you down there fast. I hate to tell you this, but there's a bit of a snag in your plan. No! Go stop Violet before she signs the marriage certificate. Opa! I'll think of something. You've lost! The Baudelaire fortune is mine! I have a marriage certificate, and there's nothing you can do about it. This device creates beams of intense heat through the convergence of light. If I can point it at the marriage certificate, it just might work. Ask me, hearties! Let's send that meddling orphan into the briny deep once and for all! <laughs> all part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All part of the show. We are not falling for it. I hereby arrest you in the name of the law. Oh dear. I'm thrilled to say that Count Olaf was captured that he was imprisoned and found guilty by the court for crimes too numerous to mention, and that before serving his life sentence, it was the judge's decree that Olaf be made to suffer every hardship that he had forced upon the children. Help! The children, meanwhile, were put in the care of Justice Strauss, who let Klaus spend all his free time reading in her library. Collected discarded mechanical parts for Violet to use in her inventions, and filled Sonny's bedroom with things for her to bite on.
I'm thrilled to say all this, but alas, it is not the truth. As I warned at the very start, the video game you are playing does not have a happy ending. If you like, you may turn the machine off right this instant and not view the unhappy ending that is to follow. <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> All part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All part of the show. Lights! Lights, you buffoon! Oh, sorry. Stop him! <coughs> He's getting away! This isn't over. No matter where you go, I'll find you. No matter what you say, no one will believe you. Because you're dull, uncivilized, insignificant little children. And you're all alone in this horrible world. I'll get my hands on your fortune if it's the last thing I do. Oh, I hated that. Let's do it again. And here we are at an ending most unfortunate. Count Olaf has escaped. The Baudelaire parents are still dead, and the orphans are once again on their own. I will leave reports of my investigation at prearranged locations, and continue to do everything in my power to keep you informed as to the fate of the children. But I must warn you, whatever adventures lie ahead for them are almost certain to be fraught with tribulation. A word which here means heartache, misery, and suffering. The video game you are about to play is extremely unpleasant. If you are interested in casting magic spells or saving the Earth from alien invasions, you might as well stop right now. If a happy ending is important to you, you would certainly be better off with something else. In this game, not only is there no happy ending, there is no happy beginning and very few happy things in the middle. This is because not very many happy things happened in the lives of the three Baudelaire children, who are Violet, the oldest, her brother Klaus, and their very young sister, Sunny. Sunny was at an age where one mostly speaks in a series of unintelligible shrieks, which most people had trouble understanding. For instance... Jack! <coughs> Mr. Bo? From the bank? <clears throat> Children, I'm afraid I must inform you of an extremely unfortunate event. I'm very sorry to tell you this. Your parents have perished in a fire that destroyed your entire home. Perished is a word which here means they were lost forever to everyone who loved them, and that the world had suddenly become a lonely and sinister place in which the children had to see their way. I know you must feel awful right now, but I have some very good news for you. As the executor of your parents' estate, I've made arrangements for you to live with your dear uncle, Count Olaf. <coughs> Consider yourselves lucky children. He's an actor by trade. Generosity is rare in his profession. We don't know a Count Olaf. Hello, hello, hello. I am your beloved Count Olaf, and welcome to my humble dwelling, or in the words of the great French poet Ovid, mi casa e su casa, Violet Argenti. How do you do? And this must be Klaus. Ovid was Roman, and he didn't speak Spanish. And he never said that. Klaus! <laughs> what a darling child. I have it underlined. I'll show you later. Yahoo! Mr. Poe, I will raise these orphans as if they were my own. Now, where do I sign for the fortune? I mean, uh, children. How do we get this done? <clears throat> oh, you won't officially have guardianship until the hearing Thursday morning. I see. And what am I to do with them until then? <coughs> Excuse me? Nothing? Never mind. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, I'd better be getting back to the bank. 
Oh, can't you stay? I was going to pull out some board games, followed by face painting, and uh, make your own Sunday. <laughs> well, if you must go. Uh, now, children, remember, if you need anything, feel free to contact me at the bank. Orphans? Let me show you around the house. And after all your chores are done, Ski, this is where you'll sleep, time permitting. As you can see, I've stocked the place with a multitude of jollies, knickknacks, and paddywhacks for your amusement. I find that giving is the greatest gift of all. Whew. If I had music behind me, you'd be crying right now. By the way, there's a small rat infestation problem in the house. Make yourself useful and take care of it. I do it myself, but I find rats to be deeply unpleasant. I don't know. Perhaps there's something about them that reminds me of myself. Klaus, that was a very big rat. How are we gonna get rid of rats? Exterminators use traps and poisons. We don't have anything. Like many people, Violet Baudelaire was afraid of rats and didn't want to have anything to do with them. Unlike many people, she was also a brilliant inventor. Hmm. Anyone who knew Violet well could tell she was thinking very hard when her long hair was tied up in a ribbon to keep it out of her eyes. I've got an idea for a device that will do the job. I'll need a spring, a broom, a coffee can, and that boxing glove. It's locked. But I can see inside. It looks like some sort of supply closet. Look at this. It's a ventilation shaft. Klaus Baudelaire loved books. Nothing pleased him more than spending an afternoon filling up his head with their contents. And everything he read, he remembered. I read a book about home ventilation once. From the size and age of the house, I'd say this is part of an old remote-mounted multiport system. It should connect to other nearby vents and may lead to rooms behind locked doors. Sonny, you up for a challenge? What's that? It's a telegram. To Violet Klaus and Sonny Baudelaire. Beware of Count Olaf. Stop. Motives highly questionable. Stop. We are collecting evidence of wrongdoings. Help us find more. Stop. When assembled, all will be revealed. Stop. P.S. The world is quiet here. Where did it come from? It says that it was delivered by the very fast delivery service. You can take care of this. Right, Klaus? Great job, Klaus. Let's go tell Count Olaf we're finished. something? There's a note over here. It's from Count Olaf. Dear orphans, your handling of the rodent matter was sufficient enough that I'll allow you to clear out the spiders as well. Deal with it quietly. I am rehearsing and will not tolerate interruption! Spiders? Big? Hairy? Spiders? Hmm. I've got an idea. I'll need a funnel. An inner tube, a fork, a fan, and our lunch. That fork is perfect for my invention. Maybe he'll let us borrow it. Excuse me. Hey! What are you doing sneaking around? I was just gonna ask if I could borrow. Can you hear me? Get lost! Hey! Who let you in here? Don't move! I'll show you what happens when you go sneaking around where you're not wanted. Huh, <sighs> that was the last one. Our chores are finally done. Oh, really? I thought I was the one who decided when your chores were finished. My theater troupe will be dining here this evening, and you will have dinner ready precisely when we feel I must leave now. Prolonged exposure to children makes me ill. None of us know how to cook. 
We don't even have a recipe. Maybe we could ask our new neighbor, Justice Strauss, if she has a cookbook we could borrow. It's so nice to finally meet you children. I'd love to help you, but my fellow justices will be arriving soon for a meeting and I must get this library back in order. Maybe we can help. Oh my goodness, would you? I'd be so grateful. My most important books are scattered about and must go back in their alcoves. You can tell where each book belongs by matching the title with the design of its display. Please hurry, children. My guests will be here any minute. Good luck! Children, I don't know what I would have done without you. You've put everything away exactly where it belongs. Oh, and just in the nick of time, I have a wonderful cookbook tucked away on the top level. It's a little hard to get to with all the construction, but if you can find a way up there, you're welcome to take it with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have guests waiting. You go up top. Hmm. I've got an idea. If I had a book strap and some sort of pull cord, I could attach them to that fire extinguisher to invent a device that will help Sunny jump. Noodles, tomatoes, garlic, olives, and anchovies. Pasta puttanesca. That should do it. Let's head back to Count Olaf's and start looking for ingredients. So, you've decided to waste your time rummaging through old books next door. Funny. I thought I told you to start making dinner! But we were looking for... Blah, blah, blah! Do you know what it's like to have to act on an empty stomach? Can you even imagine? This is the pantry. This is where the food is kept. This is where you should be looking. Now get to work. It looks like that switch opens the door, but none of us are tall enough to reach it. Hmm. I've got an idea. We'll need a tripod, a piano wire, and those snowshoes. From the color and smell, I'd say it's tetrachlorophenyl sodium hydroxide. What does that mean? It means you don't want to touch it. We'll need to find another way across. My stilt should work just fine. Ah, it won't budge. Then how will we get the piano wires inside? Wait a minute. I've read about this. It's a vibraphonic deluxe. Once the most prestigious name in grand pianos. What happened? The piano suffers from a fatal flaw. The parts are so precise and delicate that certain melodies can create acoustic resonance. Acoustic resonance is a term which here means powerfully intensified sound waves caused by vibrations inside the body of a musical instrument. Klaus, that's perfect. If we can play the right melody, we can blow the lid off and get inside. And then... After they dealt with the rats, I released the spiders and made them get rid of those too! <laughs> oh, Olaf, you're so clever. Ahem. <clears throat> Dinner is served. Putinesca. What did you call me? It's pasta. Pasta Putinesca. Where's the roast beef? Roast beef? Philistines? You vex me to my very core. We slave for our art. Have you not seen our suffering? When a group of international actors pauses for nourishment, they expect and deserve better than a pile of mushy chum. They expect and deserve, as the Greeks would say, roté de boeuf. But you didn't tell us you wanted roast beef. But you didn't tell us you wanted roast beef. It's not fair. Klaus! You all saw it. The plate slipped from my hand. That plate did look slippery. I felt a gust of wind. Did someone leave a window open? You monster. Lock them away. I grow weary of their miserable faces. Klaus, are you okay? No, this isn't our home. We can't stay here. You're right, but we're stuck in this room. How will we get out? Good. 
What's this? It's a skeleton key. It should open all the locks in the house. Let's see if it works on that safe. Inheritance law. Accidental death of minors? Benefits paid to guardian? Official and legal documents required. What does that mean? It means that if we die, Count Olaf gets our fortune. What are we going to do? Spunk! Sunny's right. We've got to find a phone and call Mr. Poe. I'm sure there's one somewhere in this house. The line is dead. We can't call for help. We'll have to get out of here on our own. Violet, look at this. There's some kind of hatch underneath the fireplace. Can you open it? It's sealed shut. Hmm. We'll need some weight. A pile of firewood should do. We tie it to a rope and hang it over a levered plank with a bowling ball on the other side. Got all that? I think so. Firewood, rope, bowling ball. Right? Exactly. The critics, they ignored the bad reviews. They roll off the audience, adores the bold and dashing Count Olaf. Even while he's in the shower, even while he is resting, no other thespian is his equal at this. Oh, no, that's not in the song! Oh, it's those vile children Count Olaf adopted! How dare you interrupt us in the half sanctity of rehearsal! Time for a new song. The Wicked Waltz in G minor. Whenever you're ready. Violet, would this bowling ball do? I think it would. Through that hatch, we're free from this house. Let's make sure we grab everything we want before we leave. If you are someone who likes to jump ahead of the story and guess at what is about to happen, you might suppose that the Baudelaire orphans were unsuccessful in their escape attempt and that they were thrown straight into a situation even more awful than the last. If that is what you think, you are entirely correct. Count Olaf put the children in his car and took them on what he said would be a pleasant Sunday drive. Drive is a word which here means trapped in front of an oncoming train. The children's astonishing resourcefulness saved them from imminent flattening. Once the danger had passed, Mr. Poe happened by with an assessment of the situation that had almost nothing to do with what was really going on. Sonny is far too young to be driving an automobile. <coughs> it's simply not good parenting. He took the Baudelaire orphans away from Count Olaf. But before he did, he let Olaf have one final moment with the children. I'll be back again when you least expect it. I am a master of disguise. I can become anyone. I can follow you anywhere. And I'll get my hands on your fortune if it's the last thing I deserve. Well, hello there! I am your Uncle Monty. My goodness, you must be Violet. Do you remember me? Probably not, you were only a baby. Klaus, we've never met. How do you do? And Sonny. Oh, Sonny. You look so much like your mother. But with fangs like a Malaysian pit viper. My goodness! Now, what do you children know about snakes? Not very much. Is that what you do? Study snakes? Yes, well, not just snakes. Herpetology is the study of all reptiles. Come in, come in, come in. There's not much time, and we've got to get ready for Peru. You're taking us to Peru? Isn't it exciting? Of course. I'll need to make sure you're up to the task. Peru is no place for amateurs. I've hidden four aspiring adventurer trophies in and around my house. If you can retrieve all of them, I'll know you can handle whatever challenges Peru has to throw at you. Follow me outside to get started. The first aspiring adventurer trophy is through this door. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got other things to attend to. Good luck, children. How will we get across to that tree stump? It's much too far to jump. Maybe you could do it, if you had some help. I've got an idea. All I need is a battery, some shoelaces, and two propellers. 
children, come look at this. It's called a perilous plant pod. I just had a case of them shipped in from Borneo. <laughs> perilous indeed. You don't want to get too close. <laughs> now, the second trophy is just beyond that door, on the far side of the Grim River. Best of luck. I know you can do it. Not me! Yes, but we'll have to figure out a way to lower that bridge and get across. Absolutely magnificent! You're well on your way! This next challenge is a bit of a nasty one. You'll have to get rid of a swarm of giant wasps. Um... Uncle Monty? No need to fret. You've done such a good job so far, I'm certain you'll have no trouble at all. Ready? Go! See? I knew you could take care of those wasps. There's only one challenge left. When you're ready to continue, I'll be waiting inside. Exploring the jungles of Peru will present each of you with problems that would be impossible to solve on your own. You'll need to work together. Teamwork! That's the key. In that cage is the final award. Get it? And I'll know I have assistants who can handle anything. How are we going to get up there? We're not. We're gonna lower the cage down to us. We'll need to find Uncle Monty's shipment of perilous plant pods to make this work. Each of those pods need to be moved to the right location. And we'll need to water them. The simple, common ring of a doorbell, a harbinger, one might say. Harbinger is a word which can mean an announcement of someone's arrival, but a harbinger is also a warning of terrible things to come. And though it pains me to tell you this, terrible things were soon to come. Yes, uh, excuse me, I'm uh, looking for Dr. Montgomery. I am uh, Stefano, I am an Italian man, and uh, I am here to assist and uh, facilitate uh, his efforts in any way that I can, as, uh, as well as to remain observatory. You're Count Olaf. Uh, pardon me? Uh, I, Cap, I don't know of uh, any such person as a, uh, as a Count Olaf, uh, though it certainly sounds like an impressive title. We know it's you. Well, I think you ought to be considering your hypothesis with extra carefulness. When one jumps to conclusions and speaks without thinking, uh, who knows what can happen. And that, children, is why you should always be staying clear of broken power lines. Oops, you caught me being a mentor. Quite right, Mr. Stefano. Sound advice. It's wonderful to meet you, and bless you for coming on such short notice. Uncle Monty, we have to tell you something. Sorry, children, there's no time for chit-chat. Stefano, please come with me. I'll show you the reptile room. All of my most important scientific achievements in snakeology have been a uh, direct result from uh, me wanting to be exactly like you. It's locked. What do you think he's up to? I don't know, but we have to get in there to tell Uncle Monty who Stefano really is. Maybe there's another entrance to the reptile room from outside. Let's hurry. It's a note from Uncle Monty. Children, I have a number of snakes that prefer to live outdoors. They must be brought into the reptile room before we leave for Peru. Please gather them up for me. Violet, I don't mind snakes, but I don't want to have to pick them up and carry them around with my bare hands. Me neither. Okay. 
Let's see. With the right parts, I can adapt my fruit slinger to inhale things in addition to spinning them out. I'll need a screwdriver, a garden hose, and that lawnmower bag. It's a dead end. Maybe not. What's the hurry? You're not worried about your Uncle Monty, are you? Relax, stay here. Let me play you a song. Oh no, the snakes are under the spell. We've got to recapture them. The reptile room was filled with the many strange creatures Dr. Montgomery had collected from around the world. There was the fidgety boa, who likes game shows, maraschino cherries, and nothing else. The septilingual tree frog, which can say hello in seven different languages. Namaste. And one creature that was exceptionally strange. Uncle Monty discovered this snake in Tanzania. It's called the Incredibly Deadly Viper. He's presenting it to the Herpetological Society next month as a new discovery. Sonny! Don't worry. According to these notes, it couldn't possibly harm her. The incredibly deadly viper is one of the least dangerous and most friendly creatures in the animal kingdom. It certainly doesn't look friendly. Klaus, we'd better put these snakes away quickly.
seen the last of me. Stop spinning. We ain't through by a long shot. There are often secrets to be found when investigating the lives of the Baudelaire orphans. This will be a good place to keep track of them all. Olaf is going to be very displeased with us! Don't tell Olaf. He'll fire me for sure. Oh, you horrible, disgusting little creatures! 